Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and I have just about 12 week old twins. We have Harper with us today. She's being a sleepy little peach, but doesn't want to sleep. So we'll see if we can get her to doze off by the end of this. <laughs> You're looking at the camera. So for today's video is something that is highly requested, but specific. So I'm gonna talk about my feeding journey with these twinnies so far. And if that does not interest you, you don't wanna hear the details of this. No hard feelings, I'll catch you on the next one. But if you wanna hear how it's been going, how it started, where we're at at this point, stick around. And while you're here, please do subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, but it means a lot to me. And might as well follow me on Instagram too. I give daily updates on these two little beans. So there's some good content on there. Okay, let's get into it. So yes, to start this off, I am just about three months into this <laughs> journey of having these two babies, three months almost since they've been born. And we are still exclusively breastfeeding. Tandem breastfeeding, I will add 90% of the time. Let me talk about some details here, how we started. So one thing that was really nice was before they were even born, my doctor was very good about talking to me about not putting any pressure whatsoever on myself about feeding these twins. You know, she said feeding, breastfeeding one baby can be tough. Nonetheless, breastfeeding two babies, they're two totally different people. They might have their own issues with feeding, their own preferences. You know, you have to have high enough supply to breastfeed them solely without supplementing at all. Just every woman's body is different. I have PCOS and so she wasn't sure how my hormones were going to react post birth, whether I'd be able to have the supply to breastfeed twins or at all. And also just the mental health toll it can take to feel this pressure like I have to breastfeed them or they're not gonna be okay. So I went into it with the mentality like, I would like to breastfeed them if I can, and if I can't, we will give them formula and they will be okay. So from the moment they were born, they tried to get them to latch. And <laughs> it's honestly the one thing I look back on that really annoys me about my birth experience was right as they like, put them on me for like skin on skin. They tried to get, they like put them on me and tried to get them to latch right away. And then the nurses were like taking pictures of us and stuff. The first pictures I have of us and the only pictures we have of us, a family of four, they're like, it's just a full show. Feeding in the hospital was tough. Like I said, they were preemies and there's two of them. So my body didn't know they, you know, I had to make enough milk for two yet. I would like hand express colostrum and we'd feed them that through a little tiny syringe with a pinky in their mouth, like finger feed them. And then we would also be using donor milk while we were in the hospital as well to supplement that we fed them through a syringe. And then the last day we were in the hospital, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to keep using donor milk while I was home until mine would hopefully come in. So we switched over to a creamy formula. So they wanted to start that in the hospital that last day to make sure that the babies reacted okay to it. And we ended up needing to do formula for about like two or three days. I'd say it took five to seven days, I think, before my milk came in. And we did it again, finger feeding with a syringe. So it was a long process. You were just staring. So finally the milk comes in and it comes in strong, which is great. Uh, a lot of women struggle with a lack of supply and that was certainly not my problem. I think a big factor in that is when you are breastfeeding one baby, you know, you're only feeding them from one breast at a time. And so when I started breastfeeding them from the very beginning, I was like, we're doing this tandem. I'm not doing one at a time. And so with both of them feeding at the same time, both sides were producing a lot of milk. So in order to get my supply going, I would feed and after every feed, I would pump. 15 minutes. And so that started to really build my supply and definitely kind of oversupplied. It took about a month for it to even out and even still I'd say I have a bit of an oversupply. I still pump just to like for relief but also to build a supply in the freezer. That first month I 
pumped over 300 ounces <laughs> that I froze and we had to move it to my parents' deep freezer since our freezer was stuffed. And I still pump probably three times a day or so now, usually in the morning and then in the evening after they do their last feed. That way I can go as long as I can without needing to pump again while they're sleeping. And then also in the middle of the night, usually they sleep through one of their feeds since they're sleeping longer stretches now, but I still have to pump every three to four hours. So then as far as feeding them in the night, I'd say at about week nine, so like two or three weeks ago, they really started sleeping in longer stretches, like seven hours at a time, eight hours without waking up to feed. But before then, I made sure if one of them woke up to feed, I woke the other one up. We've stopped doing that now. I don't know if it's really working for me because I'm so tired because while they are doing longer stretches, they're still a little staggered. So like she'll sleep for six hours then she like will wake up and I feed her. And usually I've pumped and I have the milk and I just bottle feed her now in the night if it's one-on-one. -on -one. Problem is though, I'll feed her after like six hours and then put her back to bed. But then maybe he's up after seven and a half hours. So I only get like an hour of sleep in between and then I'm up again to feed him and then I have to pump again and I'm like, waking up every single hour for them or me. So it's been a little tough I'm trying to figure that out still. Okay, so let's talk about one-on-one -on -one feeding. Actually, let's talk about one major thing that I have yet to cover. From the very beginning, they gave them to me in the hospital. I have been using shields, um, like nipple shields, which I didn't even know what those were until I had babies. <laughs> it basically helps them latch. Since they were so preemie and little, they had trouble with their latch. And we've been using those ever since, and we're almost at week 12. We can feed without them at this point, but because I tandem feed, I find it easier to use them. That way, if they detach their latch while feeding, I call it a natch latch, is what Alec and I call it when I'm not using the shields. So if I'm just natch latching, just no shield, it's still a little tough to do that tandem. If I'm trying to like relatch one of them, it usually pulls the other one off, but the shields just create a bit more like stability in their mouths. So for the most part, we do use the shields. I try at least once a day to do a feed without them. And then if I do an individual feed, I try not to use them. So let's talk about individual feeding here for a sec. Hello, go back to sleep. Probably like once a day, we'll do an individual feed. Like if she falls asleep really early, at night, I'll maybe top Hudson off before he goes to bed. And then we kind of get that one-on-one -on -one time, which is really nice. And then I'll usually just try to do no shield. The only problem I find is that my body is used to tandem feeding. So if I'm just feeding one at a time, the other side is like, here we go. And the letdown is really strong. So I do have a Haka. I also have the LV curve, which I prefer. I do not like the Haka. I highly recommend the LV curve, or I will just use the LV pump on the other side. So it's difficult to just feed one without being prepped on the other side to catch that letdown. But I mean, I think moms with singleton babies deal with letdown on the other side as well. So when I pump at this point, even after I feed them, I can pump usually five to six ounces in about eight to 13 minutes. I try to pump for 15 minutes, but if I fill the six ounce container in like eight minutes, I don't usually pour it out and keep going. I usually just stop at that point. I talked about this in my newborn must have video, but the two pumps I use, I like I mentioned, I have the LV totally portable hands-free pump and I have the Motif Luna. They sent that to me and I'm obsessed with it. I love my Motif Luna and it's hospital grade. You can charge it battery charge. I have that version. So it's pretty portable. If I need to get up and walk around with it, I can. I just have to, you know, hold on to the base. The Motif Luna is much stronger. The LV is very convenient. Um, definitely not as strong, I would say. It takes longer for me to pump a full five ounces if I even do within 15 minutes, but it's very convenient. So that's where we are now. Supply is going well. If I'm ever feeling like the supply is dropping a tiny bit, then I have tea like mummy's milk tea. And I also have the liquid gold supplements. I don't know if they actually do anything. I think the tea more than the supplements. I don't use either one consistently. So my goal is to hit six months of 
breastfeeding. I just said at that point, we will see how we're doing if we want to call it a day, if we're able to, you know, even if we're able to make it that far, I know supplies can drop, um, or maybe we want to keep going and see how long we can do this. And one thing I do for my bags of frozen milk, I do have some of them marked. Those early days when you have more colostrum and just like the, it's like the better milk, it's full of all sorts of things, those early days, those pump bags I have marked. So in case they are ever sick, I can feed them that, which has some extra goodness in it. And then I also have bags marked with an X. If I have eaten like cabbage or something that upsets their stomach and it's gonna like make them refluxy or gassy or something, I don't wanna throw away any milk. You know, I can use it to give them a milk bath later on, but that is milk that is not meant to be thawed to drink. So that is the journey so far. Please let me know if you have any more questions. I'm happy to answer them. I know a lot of twin moms, they'll do formula or they do exclusively pumping and bottle feeding. I find it more convenient just to tandem breastfeed them. But that's just me, I know that that's more of a minority choice in the twin feeding world. So however you do it, props to you. You're raising a baby or two or three. You're feeding them however works best for you and for them. And I'm just really grateful that so far the plan is working out for us. So if you like this video, if you learned anything helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Please make sure you're subscribed and I'll be sure to see you guys on the next one. Bye.